Good morning and good evening. Uh, friends, I'm delighted and honored to be part of the World Cotton Day celebrations in Bangladesh. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind to say this, that in the past decade, apparel exports and per capita income have doubled in Bangladesh. So uh, congratulations, Bangladesh is making strides. And therefore I titled my talk as Bangladesh Racing Forward. Now, I don't have to emphasize the importance of uh, textiles in our social, cultural, and economic life of the Asian region, especially uh, the Southeastern uh, Asian region. But importantly, Bangladesh cottons have been globally known. I mean, they've been traded uh, throughout Asia, Persia, Africa, and historically, we have all grown up on these amazing stories from Bangladesh and its cottons. Who doesn't know the famous uh, and legendary Dhaka Muslims, the Jamdanis, the Kantasaris. Last time when I was in Bangladesh, the first thing that I was looking out was for the Kantasaris. And uh, take a look at this uh, amazing picture, a painting that was made 230 years ago but look at the sheer beauty of the fabric of the apparel, which is the Dhaka Muslims. And uh, the world marvels at how, uh, um, like how amazing the handicraft was at the time with the 340 counts from the native cottons. And this is an inspiration to the world. Bangladesh uh, itself has been a great inspiration to the world, uh, uh, not only over the past, uh, I mean, not only let's say, historically, but over the past few years, uh, it's been doing amazing job by providing employment to 4.5 million workers. I mean, this was the latest figure that I could understand. And uh, in fact, Bangladesh has been racing ahead with growth in spinning mills, weaving mills and garment factories. Interestingly, cotton happens to be the mainstay of the textile industry with 80% contribution as raw material. So this itself, augurs well for the environment and uh, like for the cotton economy. Um, I must uh, mention at this point of time that I have the, I've been having the good fortune of interacting with the cotton scientists of Bangladesh under the leadership of Dr. Farid Odin over the past so many years now, Dr. Kamrul Islam, Dr. Akhtar Zaman, there's so many of them. And I must say how impressed we are, all of us have been with their receptivity, with their keenness to learn. And no wonder that in the past two to three years, uh, the cotton production in Bangladesh has uh, been looking so very positive that the yields are increasing. I'm sure they will do much more to the country. Um, like probably one great challenge that they will be facing, I think uh, would be in terms of the crop duration. So uh, if, if that gets down to maybe about 140 days, 150 days, I'm, I'm sure uh, the cotton industry, uh, I mean, the cotton production systems in Bangladesh would make still further greater strides. And why is cotton important? Why is textile sector important to Bangladesh? I need not say this. Everyone knows that the textile exports comprise, I mean, at least last year of 84.5% of the total exports of the country. So, I mean, textiles do play an important role. Um, again, globally, cotton provides direct livelihood and employment to more than 170 million persons. Actually, the number is more. It could be as much as about 250, but uh, 170 million persons means this is more than the total population of Bangladesh itself. Though uh, COVID became a game spoiler, we at the ICAC believe that uh, there is an eminent possibility of uh, the sector to revive with the global textile demand uh, to recover back. And uh, probably, I mean, if our estimates go right, the mill use could be uh, increasing by about 6.4%, uh, which also means that the ending stocks uh, would slightly increase, but then we'll have to wait and see how the sector shapes up. Certainly there is hope. Now, the global cotton demand there, are, there have been three major shocks, and this is what is troubling everyone. And this, I'm sure, is one of the greatest concerns for a country like Bangladesh, 
which looks towards the global cotton demand. The 2008 financial crisis was a blow, and this was rapidly followed by the high prices and high volatility, uh, uh, subsequent to 2010 and then 2011. And following that, it, it has been a bad phase. And uh, 2019 came as a big blow in the form of COVID-19. But uh, I must say that of all the countries in the world, probably it's only Bangladesh, which was able to strike a balance between economy and uh, between public health. And uh, though it is such a populous country, amazing work indeed. When I was looking at all the list of countries, there is, uh, in fact, Bangladesh does stand out for the exemplary work that they've been doing. And uh, international cotton prices have once again been a major concern. And uh, this downward uh, trajectory has been because of the trade disputes, weak economic growth, weak consumer demand, high ending stocks, which have been like never before. And of course, uh, of course uh, uh, a lot of impact lot has been impact because of COVID. World cotton trade, uh, I must make a mention here that 35% of the global cotton production is actually traded amongst countries. And uh, needless to say, this year was a bad year for trade. Uh, trade has been badly affected. Everything got stopped near the port of entries. But then from the ICAC, we are positive. We expect that the trade would recover. And probably this year, maybe by the year end, uh, trade should recover back to its original status of 9.3 million tons. And as you can see in the second part of the graph, uh, the top importing countries, almost all countries have been badly affected because uh, the raw cotton flow itself has been affected. Amongst all countries of the world, um, textile and apparent trade was worst headed Bangladesh to an extent of 83%. And this is not a small blow, but then it is like I've been saying, it's amazing how the positive uh, attitude of the country uh, has helped it uh, take uh, to kind of a resilient position. And uh, this is what is a positive spirit. Uh, the Bangladesh apparel exports, they've been moving ahead, going ahead, but then again, uh, the pandemic caused losses of at least an estimated $4. billion. Needless to say, apparel industry is the backbone of Bangladesh economy and uh, like it has always been. And uh, in 2019, the, uh, the ready-made garments sector uh, provided 84% of all export uh, revenues. So this is indeed a big blow. $4.1 billion is not uh, small for a country like Bangladesh. It's also interesting that Bangladesh textile industry has been reinventing itself. I mean, it is the market intelligence primarily, what the world needs. So the textile in the, uh, industry oriented itself to the catering demands in the form of, uh, of the personal protective uh, equipment, in the form of medical protective clothing, in the form of face masks, but this is not all. Bangladesh has uh, shown a steely resolve to fight back the pandemic. Now, I must deal with uh, a few of these points. Why Bangladesh appears unstoppable? One, they struck a balance between economy and health. And this was amazing. The political leadership was absolutely exemplary. And the prime minister's stimulus package, probably it could be more than this, but this is what I found in literature, which is $588 million. And there was an estimate which said that uh, the total uh, support was up to about $5.1 billion. But uh, it is not only opening factories, but then providing a stimulus package to pay salaries of garment workers was indeed commendable, highly commendable. And at one point of time, there was a feeling that when you open factories like this, and when people come very closer, is there a possibility of maintaining social distance? So there was a major concern, there was worry. Will the pandemic cause havoc and disaster? But then it was surprising that after July, you see that, uh, I mean, the COVID cases 
the at least the reported cases from 4,300 or something in July, they keep coming down and down. So, and uh, the Bangladesh Bank has also done a great job by increasing the Export Development Fund by $1.5 billion. So that now it totals up to about $5 million. And again, uh, there was so much of orderliness in all these processes. Uh, it is being reported that uh, all workers, including all the government workers, were being paid digitally. And uh, again, there was a humanitarian aspect to this, that 65% of payments were made to workers uh, during the months of uh, April and May, uh, like during the lockdown period, but to workers who could not work, I mean, that is the amazing part. There is a kind of a humanitarian angle to it. So like, congratulations for such great moves. And as a result of all these initiatives, no wonder productivity is going up. Uh, it is on a path to recovery. Bangladesh is looking very good now. And uh, PCR labs, have been set up in factories. Uh, I mean, this was the news, which was really good. So that essentially means that technologically, the country is willing to accept and uh, like adopt to uh, everything, I mean, to all the global changes that are happening uh, across the world. So uh, these initiatives have indeed uh, like resulted in the decline of COVID cases. So from July to September, there's almost a 70% uh, like decline in the number of cases. Congratulations, uh, Bangladesh, hearty congratulations. And uh, there is so much of hope. I'm sure Bangladesh will not only show a way for its own population, but it's showing the way to the world, how to cope with this pandemic. Uh, like, thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Minister, uh, like Dr. Abdul Razak. Uh, thank you, Secretary Nazir Zaman. Thank you, Dr. Bhaktia. And my friend, Dr. Mohammad Faridudin. Thank you so much for giving me this honor of uh, sharing my thoughts, our thoughts. This, this was a joint presentation made by me and Ms. Lorena Ruiz, who, are, uh, who is our economist. And uh, I'd like to thank her as well. So, like, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kanti sir, for your nice and informative presentation. And that will also, also be a guideline for our future planning and developing our own strategy for our own development. So now I am requesting our Honorable Executive Director, sir, to presenting his keynote paper. Yes. Uh, uh, good, good morning uh, for uh, Washington. Uh, and good evening for Bangladesh and some areas. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, even uh, honorable minister, sir, uh, Dr. Mohammad Abdul Rajak, uh, member of parliament, uh, honorable minister, minister of agriculture, government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Uh, let me allow me uh, to take an opportunity to privilege to tell something about our honorable minister, sir. Because if I cannot tell, uh, to all the participants, all the international participants, uh, I think that is a, I have some obligation or mental obligation from my soul. You know, the Honorable Minister Sir already mentioned he was agriculture scientist, but what he contribution whenever he has taken over the charges of agriculture minister. Just I like to mention few sentences. You know, when the COVID-19 has identified in Bangladesh, that time, it, it was really the time for the you know, harvesting time of burrow rice. We have three seasons rice cultivation. So that was the main season and that was the harvesting time. And we have an area of power, uh, risky, that water will come uh, before the, uh, at the beginning of the rainy season. So that was the very critical time. But he has taken the steps and serious steps he has taken with the help of ministry, with the help of Department of Agriculture Extension, in, he has arranged how the harvesting will be done very within the very short time to save the crop, save the rice, because rice is our main strap and food. And he has taken many machines, harvester, combined harvester, reaper, and quickly he can 
that quick, quickly farmer can harvest the rice and he, he has saved the country from the famine. As well as he has take, arranged the, you know, how to take the labor from the different areas of the country. Because, you know, Bangladesh though is a highly populated country, but we are suffering, we are suffering labor crisis in case of agriculture sector. So he has taken the steps and many areas he has been working very attentively, very seriously, and in agriculture sector, he has got momentum under his leadership. So we like to recognize him. We just today, uh, we feel very honored that our honorable minister sir is with us. So we have other guests already mentioned: uh, a fair representative, uh, Mr. Robert Simpson, Dr. Kai, Dr. Kanti from ICSC, uh, uh, Negam from Egypt and uh, Lubjo from Vienna. We have the participants of Turkey, actually we have participants from seven countries. And this is the uh, participants become uh, 97 or 98, around 100. And we have also uh, the represent, uh, executive chairman, special guest from uh, uh, Bangladesh Agrika Services Council. Our honorable secretary was a special guest, but if he's sick, might be he, he can join anytime. And we have other uh, you know, discussion, Professor Hamid uh, from Bangabandhu University, as well as Negam from Egypt. And they all head, head of the department under the Ministry of Agriculture. We have other, uh, you know, stakeholder like the Private Genius, Cotton Genius Association. We have the representative from the BGMA, from the, BGMA, uh, from the Bangladesh Cotton Association. Those are the uh, involved with the cotton imports. And... Uh, we have also our uh, field level uh, officers of Cotton Development Board. We have media, electronic and print media, and also the director of the AIS, who is uh, in favor of the uh, Minister of Agriculture, is working for the media activities. So well, we feel that it's a honor for us that this is a very special night or a special day for Cotton Development Board. So I like to go for, I like to go for the presentation of uh, on the basis of all cotton day we have uh, two events yesterday and this is the continuous event of that hard part that international meeting virtual meeting webinar meeting so my uh, topics of the presentation is sustainable cotton production in bangladesh challenges opportunities and way forward i like to mention one sentence that bangladesh is a very big consumer but Bangladesh, as well as Bangladesh, is very small cotton producer. This very interestingly happened. The coincides, you know, the, 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 this year is the birth hundred years anniversary of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who actually built this country. Who, under his leadership, we have got the independence, and after the independence, actually we got the development. The per capita income is two thousand dollar from six hundred and dollar. And every aspect we got the development and, and our livelihood has improved. improved. It's under, only under the leadership of Bangabandhu. And now under the leadership of the Sheikh Hasina, her daughter is, is running and everything actually done uh, by the Sheikh Hasina under her leadership. So this year, the World Cotton Day, as well as the 100th the anniversary of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur, coincides, we like to remember that. And the Bangabandhu of the nation, Bangabandhu mentioned that apart from food, agriculture would also provide raw materials for the industrial sector. He established the Cotton Development Board in 1972, actually, the he established. Though he could not achieve the cotton as per his desire. This is another reason. I'll tell it later. So the, uh, the, the cotton this year, the theme of the World Cotton Day is world's most important natural fiber. So two events we did yesterday. This year is uh, today's last event. If you go for the uh, achievement of Bangladesh before going to the cotton, if you see Bangladesh has achieved a remarkable success in agriculture during last decade. If you see the agriculture at a glance, if you say in many crops, what is the position you see? Third in rice production, third position vegetable production, third position in uh, culture feed production, self sufficient in self cereal production, especially rice, and our one of the best research institute, Bangladesh Rice Institute, developed more than 100, 
piling rice varieties. Uh, that has been cultivating many neighboring countries. They have developed uh, zinc and rice variety. They are undergoing the research on golden rice. And Bangladesh is going to be middle income country, graduating middle income country. OK, come to the textile sector. Already Dr. Keshav has mentioned this paper. But we were the second largest producer, apparel producer of the world in 2018, second cotton consumer, and highest importer. It varies year to year, but still we have a very good position in the three sections of the textile. We have 500, the number of spinning wheels has increased now, 500, around 500 spinning wheels, world class spinning wheels. We have 5,000 ready made garments, and that is. Now, you know, after F accord and alliance monitoring, that has developed much. And 5,000 5, ready-made garments, we have 5 billion workers directly, and 80, 70 to 80 percent is women. If you consider the other accessory, other activity related with the ready-made garment, it will be more than 10 million even to involve with the structural sector. And we are importing, it varies from 7 to 8 or 8, more than 8 million, because Earlier it was 8.3, 8.4, 8.5. Now, last year it was 7.5. But this year, due to COVID-19, the different situation. But hopefully it will occur. So it requires 30, around 25 to 30,000 crores. Very big. One, 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 one thing the green government is like to say uh, about the governments, you know, after the Rana Plaza accident, we developed how much the lead uh, considered the eco-friendly garments. And out of 27 platinum, platinum rated lead garments, 14 green garments in Bangladesh, and out of 14, seven from the first to the seven top from Bangladesh. So how much we have developed the environment and eco-friendly, health-friendly, workers-friendly environment in the garment sector. If you see the Bangladesh is, uh, you know, many uh, international brands, sourcing their ready-made garments from Bangladesh. If you mention like the ASM, if you mention Jara, Walmart, many, many, even the uh, Primark, also the, they are major sourcing from the Bangladesh ready-made garments. And 85% our export is coming from the, uh, the ready-made garments. One important message earlier, the accessories. Earlier it was imported, but now Bangladesh is capable to you know, prepare all the accessories. So we are self-sufficient. Now go for the Bangladesh cotton sourcing in different countries that I don't like to mention. In different many countries we are sourcing from the country, USA, from Africa, uh, from uh, India, uh, and uh, many African countries we are sourcing. So this very recently happened. Our honorable minister has developed a, a foundation, laid a foundation for a new building, construction of a new building for cotton. It does not mean building is not only the thing, but it's an expression for us. And he declared that 24,000 to 30,000 crore taka is necessary for importing this requirement of cotton. So if we can produce our own cotton, then it can we can save our foreign time. Okay, go for the cotton situation, cotton production in Bangladesh. We are growing actually two types of cotton. One is upland cotton. This is Gossipium hirsutum, And another is hill cotton. Earlier it was called Kumilla cotton is Gossipium arborea, this old cotton. And uh, you see, we're increasing slowly the production and the acreage also. You see, we are now acreage of 47,000 hectares, and we are production is close to the 200,000 bales. This means that two lakh bales. But the rest we are importing. So you see, we have two types of cotton, but uh, upland cotton or American cotton or gossip and hirsutum, we are increasing the productivity from the two tons to four tons. So if you go to the, under the Ministry of Agriculture, the Cotton Development Board actually working on behalf of the government. And we have the two major areas of, one is research, another is extension. So we are under the same umbrella. But in addition to that, Cotton Board very small department, but we are, we are working many things. We are producing seed our own way in our research center, seed multiplication farm. We are doing research. We are doing extension activities with the farmers. We are uh, also involved 
with the credit because we have 5,000 crore, we have 500, uh, 5 crore taka as the revolving fund. We, can, we are providing uh, to the cotton farmers and we recover it. We, we are providing training to the farmers and we are also involved in the marketing and training process that farmers can sell it to the, uh, go for the proper procurement by the private team. You go to the research, we have five research centers in five different locations of the country. A very interesting, the one is southeastern part, one is middle zone, one is northern part. Even in the hill area, we have a, we have a research center it's called a Hill Cotton Research Center. We have physical facilities, but we need to strain our research. We need to go for number of researchers and number of, and lab development and go to good research like biotechnology and rather other modern research. Okay, in, part, in the extension part, development part with the farmers, we have uh, four regional stations, regional uh, deputy directors, we have 13 zonal uh, officers and 195 unit offices where diploma agriculture workers are working. They are directly providing extension service to the farmers. This is the way the technologies generated in the research center that will go to the farmers through the extension activity. Okay, if you see the growing season from July to December, July, August is showing time. It's called Kharif to in our Bangla, Bangladesh. And during the rainy season, we are actually showing. And December and up to late uh, January, we are harvesting. So it requires six to seven months. We have land. It's a, uh, you know, this is a map, suitable uh, suitable map for the cotton uh, uh, done by the BRC a few a couple of years ago, they did that. But you see the, a piece of land suitable for four or five crops in Bangladesh. But which crop farmers will grow, that will be decided by the farmer. Farmer will calculate which crop will be profitable for them. So uh, then earlier, uh, you know, research was with the body, but that was transferred to the, uh, for under Cotton Development Board, the umbrella of Cotton Development Board in 1991, that we can do. So our, but research was not strengthening after coming uh, in the under the cotton development goal. So we, if you see the participatory, how we are research management doing, as our scientists are very limited, still big number of scientists. It's not here like Bari, Biri, it's very minimum number of scientists. So how we are doing this uh, research, research management is done, we'll do, we'll go for an annual research review work, workshop. And that workshop participated by the other researchers from the NARS system, from BRC, from Bari, from Bari, uh, Biri, as well as from the university teachers, they participate, they discuss, and help to, you know, how to develop the uh, research uh, program and experiment, we'll say. And next year, again, we'll go for the review. So uh, some of the areas, you know, newly developed, one thing is climate change. In US, everybody knows it, that climate change, you know, situation is changed, and especially during the rainy season, Sowing time is our Kharif tool. Is we see erratic rainfall, over rainfall. That creates problem and delays our cotton sowing. So we have you know, developed a new technology of transplanting system. Seedling we are producing in a separate place like the tomato or brinjal or other vegetable seedling and translate, you know, transfer it to the other areas by the transplanting process. It can save even the 15 days as well as help to, you know, go for the crop season, shorten the crop season. Okay, if you go to the, you see the seedling and, uh, so we are doing the research in five disciplines, like the other institutions. We have breeding program. We are developing a variety up to two or three, one. Uh, so this is a CB hybrid on, we develop on, on hybrid our own. But other areas, you know, the private sector also contributed, especially Supreme Seed. They are importing on Chinese hybrid is performing very well, more than four tons per hectare seed cotton and 1200 kg. You see this uh, fiber production. We have soil science experiments. We have entomological experiments. We are using pheromone trap. One important thing, our honorable minister, sir, after joining the first day, he told, what about your BT cotton? What about your GMO? Why you are lacking behind? Because 20 years back, that has started in India, in USA, in Brazil, in Australia, many countries, more than 95% is growing 
BT cotton. But unfortunately, we have failed. We have released BT Beringia. Bangladesh is very brave to release the BT Beringia, but we could not receive. We, are, uh, we have started the journey a couple of years ago. We have started with a Chinese BT hybrid, but we failed in some days and performance was not good. Then with other BT cotton, but finally, JK Agri Genetics from India, we are working. And this year, we have finished our greenhouse trial. This year, we have conducted the open space confined trial. And hopefully, end of December, we are going to release this BT cotton in the farmer's table. Our Alvin Minister, of course, will release it. We declared in the media that we are going to release BT cotton in Bangladesh. We have the mutation breeding. In many countries, we have seen in Pakistan, and many countries, the mutant variety in case of cotton performing very well, yield and the fiber quality. So we are working with IE International Atomic Energy Association with Vienna, and they have given some variety, mutant variety. One variety we are going to release that can tolerate high temperature, high temperature and drought. So the drought area, barren tract, we can use this variety. So up to this, we have developed 22 cotton varieties. All varieties is not performing in the in the field level, it's not you know, good, but two, three varieties are now CB12, CB13, CB16, and as well as CB hybrid on. And also the hybrid from the private sector, ACC for Rupalia by the Supreme Seed. And we have developed 30 technologies that help from two tons to four tons seed cotton yield. Okay, you know, cotton in Bangladesh already, Keshav, Dr. Keshav mentioned that Bangladesh land is very competitive. It's not like the India or Pakistan, that your Gujarat, your Maharashtra, where cotton is growing, other crops not growing, growing there actually. But in Bangladesh, cotton is growing in highland. That crop, that land is highly competitive with other four or five crops. Farmer has the four or five options. So you have to sustain with the competitive net income. Another way we want to make the profitable for the farmers with are growing with the intercrop many vegetables. Like you see the many crop, other crops, vegetables, turmeric, coriander, banana, many ways we are mukbin in different ways. We are trying that intercrop can make profitable cotton to the farmers. If you see the one piece of land in Bangladesh, this is called cropping pattern. One year, how many crops will grow? It was earlier two crops. Now three crops, even four crops in some areas, but commonly crop and density is, is near 200. When two crops in a year, in a single piece of land needs to grow. Farmers want to grow, and, and that is the potentiality of the, our soil. And now if we see the cotton as it requires six, six to seven months, we have developed some cotton-based cropping pattern. One is, you know, see cotton, jute, this is Kustia, Chiwadanga, Jinaida, where Jesho, major cotton is still growing. This pattern, cotton, jute. After harvesting cotton, again they grow cotton. Cotton, maize. After cotton, they grow maize. And again, after maize, they grow cotton. Cotton, uh, system. This is another very common because system requires short period. After system, they grow cotton. Some areas in Sherpur and in many areas, the Borodhan, because cotton requires fourth picking, four pickings, but fourth picking, they drop and they grow. Rice, irrigated boro rice. Okay, then in agro first area, because in Bangladesh, you know, we are now the seventh position in the mango production in the world. And in the in many orchards we have, if you go to the Barin track, if you go to the South, to many areas. So at least four to five years of the orchard, we can grow cotton as the interval of in the agro first area in the mango orchard and other orchard also. We have item program, we have parsing. From on top, we are doing. Okay, the harvesting is interestingly, the woman, woman can work here and it can help women employment because harvesting is mainly die the, uh, done by the women. In the cotton field, it's a dry field and the busting time in December and January, normally farmers harvest. So it's an opportunity for the farmers. Go for the seed market, seed cotton marketing. You know, it, this is not like other crops, like vegetables, the farmers can. Uh, take it to the market or bazaar, local bazaar. What can I say? He has to sell it very limited, uh, you know, private ginning industry. Those are the men who actually purchase and procure. 
how the, the unit officers, field level officers, I mentioned the diploma is here, where the private senior chief president come and farmer take their seat cotton uh, in a uh, throw a van and they sell it to the private junior and pay the money. That will go to the private ginning industry in the Kustia and Jesho. They go for ginning, separating of fiber and seed. And this fiber will make it bail and go to the spinning wheel for the spin. So these are the ginning centers, sir. Somebody uh, may, might, I feel that they ha he has not seen the ginning center because this is very limited. 10, 12 ginning center in Bangladesh. If we can increase. And this is the opportunity for women. In the ginning center, you see all the workers are women. But if we can increase our cotton production, that can help. The, uh, that can help to provide the woman employment in the ginning center. Many opportunities. You see the bailing, very international standard bailing, and that bail will go to the spinning center. This is very important area for fiber quality. Earlier, we have very low fiber quality, like the 25 millimeter length, like the other fiber quality, micronia and other cotton experts know it. But now you the hybrid and other other varieties of our CB15, CB12, CB14. You compare, I have shown the comparison between among the India and CIS cotton that we import. You see, in some cases, the fiber length and other qualities better than the import. So we, now the our variety, our fiber is using for the export of the international uh, fabrics and international ready ready-made garments. Sir, only thing one uh, I have shown that uh, sometimes our minister, sir, I uh, he asked me, what about the uh, you know the yield of the uh, per unit area? But actually the yield uh, per hectare, and especially the fiber. If you see the top ten. If you see the top 10 cotton growing productivity from Australia's highest 2056 kg per hectare, finally actually calculated by fiber, not the seed cotton. And, and the, you know, uh, from Australia to Syria is top 10. United States is not under the top 10 productivity country. Oh, no. Their total production might be within the uh, top 10, but the productivity is low. Our productivity is 702, but ICC mentioned actually practically a little better, maybe 764 or 65 like this. So we can increase it from seven to at least the 1200, 1500, even close to the 2000 per kg. So we have to increase it vertically, not horizontally. Vertically is more opportunity to increase your total production. See, another important area, the cotton is not cons considering the fiber crop, it's also the source of the oil crop. So it's another value addition, other byproducts we have. Edible oil, this is low, lower in cholesterol, high protein, and also the wild cake is, so it's wild cake for the animal and fish feed. And also the fuel for the farmer, the cotton uh, plant, the cotton stock, the, you know, 10 months per bigha, we are getting the cotton plant. So this is called four F, it's fiber, food, fuel, and yeah. feed. So this is the four A we can get from the same crop. We have developed the last couple of years the international linkages, the, the membership, the ICAC. One like uh, I would like to mention, like this, sir, the the ICAC is working on behalf of you like we don't have ERI for the rice. We have international institute rice research institute for rice research. We have cement for maize and wheat, but we don't have any international cotton research institute. ICC really doing the job. They have accumulated all the cotton scientists of the world in different locations, different areas. They are organizing different workshops and coordinating for the researchers. It's a platform that scientists or researchers present their all, all research activities, all their updated research. We can learn from each other. They, 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 after every two years, they organize one cotton research conference. There are 400 cotton scientists attended there from all the cotton countries. So this is an opportunity for the learning, for the scientists, for the experts, and sharing we are doing. And also they are providing support to our manufacturing sector, cotton stock, and how much cotton price broadcasting they are doing with the ICAC. So if you consider we have other linkages with the Turkey, so and knows that we are working with the Turkey with the assistance of the Islamic Development Bank that we have got 12 varieties, six 
0.5 tons per hectare of seed cotton they have given the 12 varieties. We are under the tribe. If we get good variety of two, three, we will go for from four tons to six tons. So that can close to close to you know the highest produce productivity Australia and Brazil are, are like this. And also the technical cooperation from, from IEA that I mentioned. We are working JK for BT cotton, JK agrigenetics, and we attended many workshops, seminars, and uh, organized by the ICC. ICC is the regional work organizing uh, attitude is the Asian Cotton Research Network, African Cotton Research Network, and I was the chairman for two years in the Asian Cotton Research Network earlier, actually. And you see the director of the IA visited our Cotton Research Center. He advised something for the mutation breeding. And if you read Dr. Robert also one day uh, visited. I forgot actually Dr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Nur Ahmed Khandokar also hopefully joined with us. He was with us that time. He was uh, this is the, you know, our program startup meeting with ICSC, uh, with uh, Islamic Development Bank at Turkey. We are working with this due to COVID. It has a little, you know, change and disturb, but it will, again, we will we'll work full soon. And our team will go, our scientists will go there uh, to have the training from them and they will provide the training to our scientists. Here, one picture you see, Honorable Mr. Sar was smiling, happy with this team and Korai, the director of the uh, Cotton Research Institute, Turkey. Uh, with us, and we are working together. And they have observed our cotton field. So we are, I'm moving faster. This is another area, you know, the Primar is one of the international brand, the UK-based brand. They have 320 uh, outlets all over the world. And they are main sourcing from Bangladesh. They, they have their CSR fund, you know, corporate social responsibility. They have a fund. So they are providing support to the cotton farmers of Bangladesh. We have developed this relationship with the primer. And Cotton Connect is a non profitable organization working with India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. And they are providing support to the farmers. And they have some condition with environmental issue that we'll use less pesticide, we'll consider the environment as well as the farmers' livelihoods, sanitation, other. So that if they follow, if the farmers follow that, they provide the training to the farmers from their farm. And we are working as the catalyst. Then the this cotton will declare as the sustainable cotton. And they have the supply value chain from the cotton product, production for farmers to the RMG product. And that has approved by the Primark because we have worked last two years, we worked with the 1200 farmers and our product quality approved by the quality control of the Primark. And they have approved like BCI, better cotton initiatives, you know, in many countries. So this sustainable cotton will be branding for Bangladesh a sustainable cotton from Bangladesh, and that will be sold. That will be sold in 230 uh, primer uh, outlet in all over the world. So we are working with the sustainable cotton for sustainable cotton with primer. Now the vision 2040 on is a long vision we have, and Bangladesh government has declared vision 2040 on, and also the Delta plan uh, for 100 years. So up to 2040 on. It's very difficult to increase the area that I mentioned. The horizontal is very difficult, but we want to take up to 200,000 uh, 200, hectares. But we want to increase the horizon product, horizontal production, productivity from now we are six, six bell, vertical, vertical production. Horizontal we cannot, we can only the 2 lakh hectare. But vertical, we want to increase our productivity from six bell per hectare to 10 bills per hectare. If we can increase this by by our hybrid, by the technology, by good variety, then easily we can get 20 lakh bills of cotton that can save 3,000 crore taka for Bangladesh. And that creates many employment opportunities, ginning facilities, many other things, without hampering the food production. Sir, you see, there are some challenges. Of course, there are some challenges. Best, you know, biggest challenge is long duration. That already I mentioned. Many, many crops in Bangladesh farmers grow only two months, only three months. Even the rice, uh, we have the variety, 110 days, 115 days, and other vegetables and other crops. And the six or seven months, farmers can grow two crops in the six or seven months. So the cotton should compete with these two crops. If the productivity is higher and it is profitable, then the growing of two crops, the farmer will, will, will grow cotton, otherwise will migrate to other crops. That's why before a couple of years, we lost all the cotton farmers. But whenever 
hybrid and technology if whenever we have uh, you know try to get the four tons or more more than four tons per hectare then again come back some farmers to grow the cotton and the highly competitive with high value crops especially with short duration crops and other some challenges you have the long duration so more management is necessary and uh, you know sometimes you see the three four times they have to go for the fertilizer management insect management and still until you go for the bt still seven eight even ten sprays is record in a season another is price volatility this is the worldwide is open market and 97 percent is importing the price volatility, high price uh, uh, and i see the, the cost especially the picking cost you know labor cost is high and farmer our countries india pakistan all are hand picking under the developed country is by the machine picking so we are trying to introduce a small making machine picking like the spray machine there are some machines developed in pakistan and india who you want to use that another is that the small farmer cannot grow because if the farmers have the land owner of one big art or less than one acre then he will grow rice vegetables his food but if he has the big land like two acres three acres then some areas he can grow the cotton because he will get the profit after six months you have to just wait for six to seven months to get so you will get a good money if you can go for five bigger you can earn one lakh taka uh, at least in a year and another is if, uh, you know ginning capacity of the private ginning industry earlier it was older now they have improved but they still need to improve their you know ginning capacity if the financial capacity a storing capacity we are working and we are we have developed the linkage with the spinning mill that this variety of cotton will be used by the spinning mill and another is our research is very weak sir uh, our honorable minister says knows that our cotton research was very poor so we want to strengthen our cotton research recently very recently our uh, recruitment is going to approve and you have uh, taken the special initiative and we are going to recruit the scientists they will go for this is biotechnology research, advanced research that can help to increase our productivity uh, from the good hybrid, good variety. So there are some opportunity also. If you see the huge own market, we are importing by spending at 24,000 crore taka. So we have their own market. And cotton is, a, is called a climate resilient crop because the impact of the climate, we have two things. One is drought and the salinity. And cotton is these cases, cotton is dry, drought and saline tolerance. So this is the positive thing for the cotton. And this is a, you know, cotton plant, sink the carbon. This is a, actually considering the climate resilient crop in future. Then it is a temperature, high temperature loving crop. This is, a, this is called the less water consuming crop. It's a different way we see cotton is considering the climate <laughs> resilient crop. Okay. Yes. If you see the the uh, vegetables are, uh, sir. Cut it short. Cut it short. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, this is uh, you know preservation quality is it's already high. long. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I'm I'm going, sir. Way forward only the cotton research and extension we need to increase. We have to develop the short duration variety that we can go for the cropping pattern, setting the cropping pattern. We, at the other two crops can grow in a year and we have to high productivity hybrid. We need extension service and we are, we need to develop the public private partnership and the international linkages we have. So, sir, now the question last I am telling the higher we will grow the cotton. We should not hamper the, uh, our main food crop. So we will grow some of the areas higher less cotton area will grow, like saline, like hill, chor, and the tobacco replacement. I'm going, sir, only the, if you consider the barin from the Godagari to Dhamulhat, this area is high barin. We want to use that cotton is a drought tolerant without water, without irrigation, and rain-fed area, we, we can go grow cotton. Okay, these are the less water consuming, and it has taproot other facilities, so we can easily, we can. So the saline area also, we can grow. Third is area is, uh, you know, hilly area, that big area, 10% of the area. Sir, you are trying many other crops also, uh, cashew nut, very good, sir. And coffee, we, we like this, and this is also profitable, as well as uh, the slope. 
the hilly silt slope is difficult for other crops. Earlier it was zoom, but now cotton is a deep rooted, so easily we can grow and they can get the benefit. This is the area we can grow. Another is a short area, some short where inundation is not occurred during July to December, and we are getting Pabna Hemaitpur, Jamalpur, Pathaliya short. We are we are growing. Another is the tobacco area. We we easily we can replace tobacco by the cotton, and we are working with Matiranga and other some hilly area. So I have mentioned some of the areas where we'll go for the cotton. And if you so far the valuation with the other, uh, not only the fiber and other, if you consider the uh, next, yeah. if you consider, sorry, if you consider the fiber, if you consider the oil, if you consider the oil cake, then we can give it. If we go for the 20 lakh bale, then we can go for 3,000 crore taka. We can contribute to the development of the country. Sir. Uh, so, so the last one only the we are participating in different uh, activities with the, with the ICAC and very before COVID uh, situation uh, there was a textile fair I was uh, presenting uh, uh, through a stall to our honourable prime minister and this is the field busy to just I'm showing. Uh, Yes, sir, sir uh, this is the honorable minister sir has given uh, award that we are in the APA program we are third so and the building he uh, you know uh, foundation laid his own and uh, this all activity this is the thing sir thank you very much sorry sir i have taken a little uh, yes thank you very much sir thank you very much sir giving the opportunities <laughs> After listening to I am requesting Professor Dr. Abdul Hamid, panel discussion, to tell us his remarks on the keynote papers. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamrud. Listen to me. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we have listened two presentations, one from uh, Dr. Kranti and the other one from Dr. Farid. Both the presentations are very good. Dr. Kranti reminded us about our tradition of growing cotton in Bangladesh, a kind of his story that he reminded us. I thank you, Dr. Kranti, for reminding us our tradition. And Dr. Farid gave a detailed account of the cotton production as well as the uh, cotton industry as a well. whole. Uh, Bangladesh. Uh, before I, I I go for the for uh, commenting on the paper, I would like to uh, mention that uh, our great leader Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman created the Cotton Development Board when cotton was not a crop in Bangladesh. He was such a visionary person that he realized that production of cotton could have helped Bangladesh in developing our economy. And his uh, dream has come true. But uh, now the, the country is uh, the second largest exporter of apparel uh, next to China. And we had been the second in the, in the uh, second position in production, apparel production. And uh, Dr. Forid mentioned that uh, the, the country is, the, is leading in uh, uh, green cotton or green production. So I also remember those people who created this garments factory, RMG factories, because they had the vision that uh, this could develop Bangladesh economy. And that, that, that has become the truth. The, the people who had been uh, planning or who, who, who were brave to develop this uh, cotton industry or uh, RMG sector, that RMG sector is now fueling our economic growth. And uh, Dr. Farid, as well as Dr. Kranti mentioned that 85% our, of our total export uh, earning comes from cotton industry or from RMG sector in particular. 
the cotton industry has gained a uh, firm ground in the in this industrial sector and the service sector in Bangladesh, as well as in global economy, global uh, market. But unfortunately, the cotton production has not kept pace with the development of cotton industry or garments industry. We are now producing only 145,000 bales of cotton, planting cotton in on 45,000 hectares of land. This is not even 2% of our total requirement. We import 7.3 million uh, bales of cotton every year or more than that sometime. Uh, in one year, we imported uh, 7.6 million bills. That, that means uh, uh, we are spending a lot of money for importing cotton. This could be a sector for cotton import substitution. Cotton production could be a kind of import substitution. If we want to sustain our, our garments factory, RNG and textile industry, then we need to fuel this or help this uh, uh, industry by producing cotton. And the, the uh, cotton production lags behind. It is not because of the fault of the Cotton Development Board or of the people who are behind these organizations. But it is because that we had to uh, give more attention to attain our self-sufficiency product, food production. And fortunately, and uh, uh, eventually we have attained that and perhaps we can pay more attention to cotton production or the, or, or the production of those crops which will earn foreign exchange. And the, I, I, I understand the, the present government also uh, is keen about the uh, transforming agriculture into uh, 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 a business agriculture or commercial agriculture and cotton can be an, an, an instrument for that. I, I must mention that sustaining of the, of the garments factory will require sustainable production of cotton because the, the thir less than 36% of the total uh, cotton produ produced in the world are traded. And many of the trading, uh, uh, any of the countries who used to uh, export cotton, particularly in the CIS countries, those are not supplying cotton anymore. In that case, if, if the, the, these countries grow their own garments industry or apparel industry, in that case, we'll be in problem. Then why we are not doing it? And uh, Dr. Farid mentioned that uh, in his presentation, he mentioned about the, the uh, marginal areas allocating for cotton production. I would like to uh, differ a bit from his uh, uh, presentation because if, he, if this is the cotton is an important crop and it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it contributes uh, greatly to our economy. And it's, uh, the, the, he, in, in his presentation, Dr. Farid also mentioned that cotton, cotton growth apparels are for the rich people. And if this, this is so, then the, the production needs to be triggered by investing more on this sector. So what I would say that the raising from three bills to 10 bills, bills will be rather optimistic assumption at this stage. What we can do, we, we should allocate better lands for for production of cotton. It is necessary because without without having investing better land or more uh, capital, then you cannot raise production. And uh, investing or, or allocating the, the poor lands or marginal lands, you cannot raise yield of cotton. So what we need to do that we need to raise our production within the, the uh, there are some uh, of the pessimistic view that since cotton is not uh, a profitable crop, farmers will not do that. 
would, will not grow cotton. I, I think this is also not a good, uh, uh, it's not a tenable idea because if you think about 20, 10 or 15 years ago, people didn't like to grow uh, maize. But now we are producing more than 3.5 million tons of maize in Bangladesh. It was never a crop in Bangladesh. Similarly, cotton can be grown if it is profitable. I don't think that cotton is not a profitable crop. If it is not, if it is not a profitable crop, then why should, should American farmers grow it? Why should Australian farmers grow it? Austral whole of production, cotton production in Australia is exported and we are buying it. Fifteen percent of our total import is coming from coming from USA. So how the USA can afford growing cotton if it is if it is not profitable? I would suggest that th this requires uh, 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 rethinking of of growing cotton one by by investing more and also giving incentive to the farmers. If the the traders or exporters can get uh, support, uh, subsidy or something like that for 20% subsidy for exporting agriculture crops to, to, uh, to other countries, then why not the farmers growing cotton who is also doing import substitution should not get subsidy for that. So if that is done, if the policy is changed or there is a, is a policy formulated in favor of farmers, in that case, I think it is it is it will be easy for us to grow cotton. And I think in uh, for a ten year short period of time, we can uh, uh, project increasing of cotton yield by three, from three tons to six uh, three bales to six bales per um, uh, per hectare. That that will still remain fifty percent of Turkey's yield. So I think this is possible. It is not that the, the, the same variety what we are producing in, in the hybrid hybrid that we are we are producing in Bangladesh. The Xinjiang farmers are also using the same variety. Why we are lagged behind? Because we do not use inputs. We, we should not be pessimistic about the high inputs requirement of hybrid. Look, look at the rice production. The, in the in the beginning, rice farmers didn't like to use high input, but once it became a profitable crop. The farmers used to start that we start using high input. So I think this this will will be if if we can ensure market. Definitely we have the market. If we can ensure market and if the farmers get it, see it as a profitable crop. Definitely farmers will do that because slowly, Bangladesh farmers are also becoming. Business and entrepreneurs. I mean, they are they are taking agriculture as as an ag business enterprise, and we we must transform agriculture into business agriculture. So in that case, if in in the uh, framework of commercialization, I think we we can we can take uh, uh, cotton as a, as a, as, a, as a crop, and it is possible. It is possible because we have enough land for for we if, if we can allocate two millions or. 1.5 million hectares of land, medium high land for growing cotton. I think I think the, uh, the, we, we can double the production that we have right now. And also we have some problems. For example, Dr. Forrest mentioned that in, in the hill, hill areas, there are possibilities of growing cotton to replace tobacco and also to raise production there. It is possible. I, I believe that Tita Hill tracks uh, uh, mass of the land, particularly the sloping upland, remains unutilized or, or uh, uh, less utilized uh, because of the terrain uh, conditions. But if, if this can, if the cotton can be grown even in the valley lands the, uh, uh, where uh, uh, Sora or the steam water is available. And we have, we have not really worked out, but we have worked out that in, in certain sora, on certain certain uh, berry land, the cotton can be grown even in the winter season. Only problem that in some years, 
we have low temperature sometimes it goes, goes below 10 degrees centigrade at least for some days so there are some problems that that we can easily overcome there are some varieties which can tolerate a little bit uh, 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 low temperature like 12 degree or less than 12 degrees centigrade we i think we, this is possible but dr uh, as dr Corey mentioned that uh, uh, research must be strengthened. I'm not sure whether the cotton board is uh, 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 adequately equipped with the research facilities there. If not, on our honorable minister is here, he can, he can take initiative for improving the uh, uh, cotton research facilities in the cotton development board. I think uh, uh, we are in the right track. The, the, we have a full uh, effect of having a strong uh, garments industry so if if we can do it and if we can if we can motivate our farmers growing uh, uh, cotton the cotton production and uh, supply would be would be enhanced and i think the uh, uh, garments and apparel industries uh, textile industry also can come forward with their assistance for growing cotton by our farmers. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Professor Habib, sir, for your valuable remarks. That is really very important for us. Now I'd like to hand over the floor to Professor Dr. Mohammed Al Said Nigam for his brief remark as a discussion. Dr. Mohammed Al Said Nigam from Egypt. Are you here, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Is good afternoon, me? everybody. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Dr. Fariduddin, my dear friend, Dr. Kamran Islam, and Dr. Kishaf, Dr. Akhtar uh, Zaman, Dr. Uh, Murtaza, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, a lot of doctor, Dr. Sima Kondo from uh, Bangladesh. I have a lot of friends actually in Bangladesh. I am very glad to be with you uh, today. Uh, I would like to speak about the, the World Cotton Day. Uh, I think this is a very good uh, opportunity for us, starting from immediately from now. We have to put uh, uh, some uh, prospect for the next year. We have to start from today, what we can do for our cotton, for our country for our uh, cotton breeding, for our cotton industry. And we have to put a target for next year. And when we meet next year, inshallah, in, in uh, 7 October 2021, in Sharm el-Sheikh, uh, through the World Cotton Research Conference 7, we have to discuss what, what we do for our cotton, for our country, for our uh, heritage, for our job, this is actually, this is our job. So we would like to put a target and uh, try to, uh, to implement the target through uh, the next year. And uh, next year, we have to discuss what we make added value for, uh, for our country, especially and for our global cotton. I don't like to take a, a lot of time because I, I know we have now uh, almost 130 uh, participants. So uh, all of you would like to speak. So I would like to deliver my thank again to uh, uh, Bangladesh Cotton Board, Dr. Fariduddin and his, uh, his uh, uh, colleagues and his participant uh, to add another, uh, another word. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nigam sir. Now I like to move to the next part, the speech by our guest of honor, Mr. Robert D. Samson, the FAO representative in Bangladesh. Thank you very much, and I hope you can all hear me clearly. The Honorable Chair, Dr. Farid Udin, Executive Director of the Development Board, it's always a pleasure to see you. And I thank you every year for the uh, jackfruit that arrives at my doorstep. So. Uh, it's always appreciated, always very tasty. Our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Mohammed Abdul Razak, MP, Honorable Minister, Minister of Agriculture, 
our special guest. I hope he's been able to arrive or feeling better. Uh, uh, Mr. Nazaruddin, Secretary, Minister of Agriculture. Um, special guest, Dr. Bokhtar, Executive Chair of, of uh, BARC, Bangladesh. Uh, Mr. Kai Hughes, Executive Director of the International Cotton Advisory Committee. Uh, good to see you, and I look forward to hearing some of your remarks today. Um, our respected discussants, appreciate all of the comments. Um, and our keynote presenters, which has been very uh, interesting uh, presentations that I've learned a lot uh, listening to you today. Um, all of our respected participants, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Um, like, uh, uh, unlike others, I am uh, by far not an expert in cotton, so I will try to keep my remarks brief. But I wanted to congratulate um, the, the Cotton Development Board for the excellent two days ceremonies that you've had and congratulate you for the successful uh, events yesterday and certainly for this uh, fantastic webinar today. Uh, globally, more than 2 million rural farmers are involved in cotton production. So from an FAO food and agriculture standpoint, this is a very important uh, contributor to rural livelihood and, and certainly uh, betterment in, in these areas. And World Cotton Day is an opportunity to celebrate the importance of cotton, but also these opportunities for developing rural livelihoods. Of course, the world, uh, cotton is the world's most important fiber. I appreciate your theme. Um, cotton is more than just a commodity, of course. It's a culture, uh, it's a way of life, it's a tradition that finds its roots in the heart of human civilization. In fact, it goes back to uh, the, the most early days. And I appreciate the mention by uh, Dr. Caranti uh, that you recall the importance of cotton production in not only the culture of Bangladesh, but the, the incredible fibers and the soft cotton, um, this artisanal industry that, that the Bangladesh cotton industry is founded on. And just reflecting on, you know, there's a lot of discussion on the, the economics of cotton and and uh, comparative advantage of production and the relative cost of one product versus another, profitability of, of different products. Ultimately, these are the things that farmers make decisions on. And I'll look at two other crops that, you're, that have been proposed for Chittagong Hill Track, for example, which are cashew nuts and, and uh, coffee production. And oftentimes, farmers make their decisions based on what they perceive as the profitability of these crops. And certainly looking at some of these more artisanal varieties of cotton and the high value markets that they potentially bring could be a, a, a additional spin-off uh, research area for uh, the Cotton Development Board. So I would ask you to, to reflect on those when you think about the comparative advantage proposed for each of the farmers and the choices they make. Uh, I think uh, cotton is, is very important because there's many uses and this has already been mentioned so I won't labor it, but uh, certainly for our clothing, we find it in our modern day and, and old time furniture, um, in, in, in modern art uh, frequently. Uh, we make rope out of it, uh, use it in our tools for daily life, home decorations, uh, cotton seed oil, uh, cotton seed for, for livestock seed and many other uh, sorts of products. So uh, again, these were mentioned, I think it's extremely important uh, as a product. In terms of its importance globally, uh, cotton is one of the world's oldest and important employers. As I had mentioned, it employs up to 25 million people a year. Um, but it's also a, a great opportunity. And it, its global market is around $50 billion a year. And uh, there's more than 25 million tons of cotton produced in 75 different countries, if I'm not mistaken. Um, demand for cotton in Bangladesh continues to grow. And the numbers that I've seen in, in the presentations, it looks like it's somewhere around 5 to 10% annually. Um, an expected demand of, will surpass uh, 8 million bales in the near future. And so uh, clearly there's an opportunity uh, where Bangladesh is filling in local production, only a modest amount of this um, increasing production uh, could be, a, a, as mentioned already, a, a great uh, import substitution opportunity. Um, I also want to, to, to uh, congratulate you through the leadership of the Cotton Development Board uh, that you have ambitious plans moving forward. I recognize these, it's very important. 
Uh, there are opportunities to, to benefit from this demand and increase domestic production. Uh, but you live in an environment um, where you have a shrinking size of your arable land and growing demand for diverse and nutritious food. Um, and the, the competitive global market will uh, force you to make some very strong policy decisions on how you improve the competitiveness of your local market uh, to fill some of this demand. And you've already mentioned it, I think it's quite uh, useful for innovative cropping patterns, uh, some of the agroforestry uses, um, using high yielding varieties and planting alternate seasons uh, uh, could be definitely part of the solution. Uh, and I've noted from your presentation there's been a very uh, a strong and impressive level of research and, and innovation, but also noted that, that uh, this will have to be stronger to keep up with global competitiveness. Uh, I'd also like to note and congratulate the Governor of Bangladesh and through the Ministry of Agriculture and the Honorable Minister with us today, uh, the recent inauguration of the Cotton Building, I think just shows a very strong commitment by the government to, to move forward in this area. So congratulations to you. And I think <coughs> Indeed, could be a, a source of diversification for farmers in their sort of portfolio of crops that they're producing. FAO has a long supported uh, countries in technical and policy support, uh, boosting productivity, understanding markets, and particularly looking at these comparative advantages, uh, potential economies of scale, uh, and profitability relative to alternative crops. I think these are some of the areas that in order to progress in Bangladesh, you'll certainly have to reflect on these. Um, but I am convinced of one thing, and I know that having been here for about two years now, that the commitment and ingenuity and entrepreneurialism of the people of Bangladesh is by none uh, stronger than I've seen in, in almost every country that I've worked in. And so I, I firmly believe that uh, with this commitment uh, continues and the ingenuity of the, the Bengali people have called forward that you'll succeed in all of your uh, endeavors in this regard. Yeah, on this occasion of World Cotton Day, I'd like to congratulate yeah. all of the colleagues with us today um, and directly and directly related to cotton and the scientists, the extension workers, businessmen. Uh, um, I wish you a, a great uh, success in World Cotton Day, but also I wish you great success in your deliberations and good developing these strategies forward. Uh, and, and again, a very good uh, congratulations to all of you uh, for the successful events in the last year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your nice deliberation. In fact, the Corona Development Board, with the support of FAO, implemented IPM program, and we already did a great success, and farmer adopted those technologies. Dear respectable participants, now it's time to hear from our special guests. Firstly, I'd like to request Mr. Kai Hobbs, the Executive Director of the International Cotton Advisory Committee for delivering his speech. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. So, Honorable Minister Dr. Razak, uh, Dr. Farid Udin, distinguished guests and colleagues and, and lots of friends that I can see. Happy World Cotton Day. Salam Alaikum. So first of all, a big thank you to Dr. Udin for arranging this, um, this gathering of cotton people and textile people to just talk about the positives of cotton. And I'm gonna bring the focus back now and talk to you about World Cotton Day. Why are we, why have we got World Cotton Day? And I'm also going to try and put the focus, uh, Dr. Udin spoke uh, very eloquently on cotton, but there's also textiles, so we mustn't forget textiles. So World Cotton Day is not just about cotton, it's about cotton textiles as well. So why do we have World Cotton Day? Well, um, I just find it amazing that, um, you know, this, this, Fiber is such an important um, fiber to so many people around the world. Uh, and it amazes me that every day it touches the lives of literally billions of people um, with the clothes they wear, etc. And yet we do nothing to, to um, celebrate the people that produce it or spin it, um, nothing at all. So this was a real opportunity for us um, for all of us who work in cotton in one way or the other to celebrate this beautiful natural fiber. 
but also to highlight its global importance to many economies from the least developed countries in the world to the most developed countries in the world. By shouting about cotton and highlighting all that is good about it, we can also encourage demand for cotton and cotton-based products. So now what we have with World Cotton Day is that for at least one day every year, the 7th of October, we can all come together like we're doing now to celebrate cotton and all things cotton around the world. You know, when we launched um, World Cotton Day with our partners, uh, WTO, FAO, UNCTAD and ITC last year at the WTO headquarters in Geneva, no one could have foreseen how important that launch um, and that of that such an initiative was going to become. COVID-19 has had a severe impact on the whole of the cotton supply chain. So our celebrations today for World, or yesterday and today for World Cotton Day, provide that excellent opportunity to get cotton back on track, to start putting the focus again on cotton, to start talking about the positives of cotton, and hopefully once again, to see uh, an increasing demand for cotton. So yesterday we had many countries that were doing exactly that. We had uh, webinars and global celebrations and events in uh, India, Pakistan, South Africa, Iran, Turkey, Sudan, Egypt, Australia, Germany, the United States, and I could go on and on. In fact, um, the list is around 30 countries so far. And if you want to, to follow what is happening on World Cotton Day, go to www.worldcottonday.com and then you can have a look at all the events that have been happening all around the world and you can see what people have been doing to celebrate uh, this fantastic day. So for us at the ICAC, um, we were particularly keen that we should challenge some of the myths around cotton um, in order to put them to bed. And in particular, the myths around water consumption. And I'm sure you've all heard that, um, that figure of, um, it takes 20,000 liters to grow a kilogram of cotton. Well, Dr. Cranthy's on here and he can tell you he's worked out the figures himself and it's 1,214 um, litres to grow a kilogram of cotton. But trying to get that message out is the real challenge. Um, now we're all coming together and we can all talk with a common voice. It's much easier to do that. So we've got some fantastic videos on in, in there that can help you challenge those myths, not just around uh, water consumption, but also about the the, the Aral Sea as well. So use those, use those videos to promote cotton and, and uh, cotton textiles as well. So I'm not really gonna continue much more because the emphasis for this, or the, for this gathering is World Cotton Day. You know what it's about, you know the importance of it. And at now, now at least all of us have got one voice to shout about cotton and promote cotton around the world. So let's use it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Mr. Kai Hoax, for telling us in details about the importance of World Cotton Day and how, what is global impact. So now I like to request the executive chairman of the Bangladesh Agriculture Research Council, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Bakir Sar, to deliver his speech as a special guest. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kamrul, Honorable Chief Guest, Minister, Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Madhavdur Rajak, who has a very long professional experience and our proud freedom fighter of Bangladesh soil. Respected uh, special guest, uh, Robert Simpson, uh, Kai Hoggs, ED, ICAC, our Keshav Kranti, our discussant, Professor Hamid, and Professor Rigam, and our distinguished guests and colleagues, those are right now joined with us in today's webinar. We are Highly honored by the presence of our Honorable Agriculture Minister. Thank you, sir, for kindly being with us as a chief guest. 
uh, dear colleague, uh, at first I thank the case of Kranti and Dr. Fodin for the nice presentation. And especially I thank Keshav Kanti because I'm a little bit overwhelmed to see the emotional picture a woman in fine Bengali Muslim that is indicates our glorious history, past history of cotton. And all of you know that in 2013, our traditional Jamdani Muslim was listed as masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity, declared by UNESCO, which indicates the future, our glorious history of cotton. Uh, today we are very happy because first time we are going to celebrate the World Cotton Day. Dr. Bhakti, our chair, Honorable Chairman PRC, we are not listening you kindly. Un unmute, unmute, yes. you, unmute your microphone, please. No, still we are not, we are not listening, please. Can you hear me? No, no, no. Now it is okay. Okay, once again, uh, uh, I'd like to thank Honorable Minister for kindly being today uh, at our seminar as a chief guest. I also thank our keynote speaker, uh, Keshav Kranti and Dr. Fodiduddin. And I personally thank the Keshav Kranti uh, because I'm a little bit emotional to see the picture, a woman in fiber, Bengali Muslim, which indicates our glorious future of cotton. Even in 2013, our traditional art of weaving, Jamdani was listed of masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity declared by UNESCO. It is once again indicate the past glorious history of cotton. However, we are very much happy because first time Bangladesh is going, the world going to celebrate the world cotton day, first time in collaboration with International Cotton Advisory Committee. And Bangladesh government always highlighting such international day and you'll be happy to know this year all Cotton Day 2020 celebrates coincide with our birth century of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sikh Mujibur Rahman. Dear colleague, such type of day has a lot of importance indeed. All Cotton Day provides a common platform to international community and the private sector to share knowledge and showcase the cotton activities and product. Indeed, Dr. Kesob, he mentioned the glorious history of Bangladesh agriculture, but still the key issue and challenges in food, water, and energy makes us the skeleting growth of population. That's why food and nutrition security, especially nutrition security of the great challenge for Bangladesh. Our per capita land is declining. In addition, soil degradation, declining soil fertility, sensitivity to climate change, and cost of production, those are the major challenge of Bangladesh agriculture. Though we have a 
very development trajectory of Bangladesh agriculture. And if we look, every year Bangladesh, especially for the major agriculture commodities, we are expanding almost 8.18 billion US dollar last year. Among 8.18 billion dollar, we expend almost 2.66 billion US dollar for the cotton. And our total export, already Kesha mentioned, if you look almost 85% export is from RMG sector. So we have a significant importance of cotton and research and development. And our Dr. Farid, ED, Cotton Development Board and Keshav, he mentioned the whole scenario of cotton production. Actually, it is right now Bangladesh using almost 0 0.44 million hectare with a yield of three ton per hectare seed cotton. And we have a projection we want to increase our land by 2030, almost 0 0.1 million hectare with a yield of six ton per hectare seed cotton. So this is the great challenge for Bangladesh as every year we are losing almost 0 0.76% land every year. So it's a really great challenge for us to increase the productivity of the cotton. Just I have already the keynote speaker, they mentioned the way forward where we can uh, involve, especially how the researcher can involve to increase the productivity of cotton. So I have some suggestion actually, it is true, very difficult to increase the land of cotton, but we have some opportunity because vertically it is very difficult. So we need to increase our productivity. That is uh, horizontal is very difficult. We need to increase our productivity through vertical expansion. In addition, our, we need a short duration uh, cotton variety. And indeed, we have to emphasize more biotechnical research. That's why we need a BT cotton, only the way to increase the productivity to make it profitable to the farmers. Because farmers are the end user. If they can earn more from cotton, definitely they will accept cotton. It is possible to increase the area of cotton also. And intercropping also of the way to get interim benefit of the farmers from the cotton field. That is one of the way by where we can, uh, in, in, where we can grow on a two crop as intercrop from the cotton field. And I also like to give emphasis, especially on the byproduct, because this is also one of the area to, we have a lot of scope to increase the, to, to diversified use of the cotton. So finally, I thank uh, uh, the uh, I, uh, International um, Cotton Advisory Committee because Bangladesh always highlighting the science, innovation and technology. And we are always encouraging such type of international cooperation because as a scientist, we believe actually only the scientific intervention, only the way where we can do uh, something for the betterment of the farmers through research and development. And COVID-19 further highlights the importance of technology. So I have a appeal to the international community, those are involved in cotton research and development, especially the international uh, uh, cotton advisory committee to come forward. We need your support and Bangladesh is ready to accept any international uh, collaboration. Uh, uh.
for the cotton research and development. So thank you all of you and our special th thanks to our honorable uh, minister for his kind presence today. I hope the discussion made by our <coughs> participant and, uh, and the panelist, we had a very fruitful discussion today. Thank you all of you. Thank you, sir. Our respectable secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture is sick, so he is unable to join with us today. Dear participants, we are waiting for a long to listen our honorable agriculture minister. I humbly request our honorable agriculture minister, a visionary leader of agriculture sector, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rajak MP sir, to deliver his speech. Good evening. It's a uh, night in Bangladesh at 10 o'clock. I know some of our participants have joined other part of the world. There's, it's a good afternoon or good morning even. Uh, Honorable Chairperson and keynote speaker, Dr. Mohammad Puriduddin, Executive Director of Cotton Development Board, Today we have special guest, Mr. Kai Hughes, Executive Director, International Cotton Advisory Committee, guest of honor, Mr. Robert Simpson, a few representative in Bangladesh. Two key speaker, one was Executive Director himself, Mr. Dr. Fori, and Dr. Keshav Kranti, Head of Technical Information Section, International Cotton In Advisory Committee. Honorable panel discussion, and also special guest, Chair Executive Chairman of Agriculture Research Council, Bangladesh. Participants from Cotton Research Institute, Turkey, Egypt, and other countries participants from different organizations, both research and development and extension of Bangladesh, journalists from print and electronic media. At the beginning, I'd like to thank you for your <laughs> patience and enduring pain, listening so long. It has been long uh, deliberation. It is indeed a great honor and privilege for me to be one of the, to be chief guest of today's webinar on sustainable cotton production in Bangladesh, challenges and way forward. I'm Really happy to see so many cotton experts, partners, and stakeholders from home and abroad joining this important webinar. I thank C CDP, Cotton Development Board, for organizing this webinar and giving me opportunity uh, to speak uh, on this important topic. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, this is the first time we celebrated National World Cotton Day 2020 with high priority. This World Cotton Day of 2020 has special significance to us as this coincides with the birth centenary celebration of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Bangabandhu established CDP, CDB in 1972, the second year of our independence. His vision was that agriculture would also provide raw materials for our industries and create employment and generate income. Bangladesh agroclimatic condition is quite favorable for growing varieties of crops 
who is of our enormous promise for processing for export and face foreign exchange for the country. As you know, in last decades, textile sector of Bangladesh has emerged as a largest component of our industrial sector. These days, we are second largest exporter of ready-made garments after China, who is obviously need huge quantity of cotton. Thus, I can overemphasize the importance of cotton production in Bangladesh. Unfortunately, almost totally, we are dependent on imported cotton that we need for our textile industry. So, once Bengal was famous for its quality cotton and its finest quality fabric, which was famously known in different part of the world as famously known as most different part of the world as mostly. He also noted about Jamdani, which is a heritage of Bangladesh, and it has been included in UNESCO heritage document. We are always proud of our Muslim and Jamdani. That attracted many colonial rulers to rule Bengal to exploit its natural wealth, including cotton, made textiles evolved by our local weavers. However, these days, cotton production has declined to a negligible quantity for various reasons. As existing varieties of cotton, unfavorable agroclimatic condition, poor cultivation practices, which resulted in low production and non-competitive for production. Rice production has been always on the top of priority to ensure food security because rice is the main staple food for the people of this part of the world. It occupies 74% of our cultivable land, that's arable land. With the dawn of green revolution with HYB, yielding variety of rice and other crops like vegetables, fruits, potato, edible oil, pulses, etc. And many less profitable crops have been pushed to the marginal land. That's the serious constraint. Dr. Farid, in his presentation, he covered most of the important issues of cotton cultivation in Bangladesh. Its prospect, its constraint and opportunities, and present level of production and productivity. He went in very detail, starting from production to processing, marketing, consumption, and trading. He covered most of the things. It was a long and detailed presentation. So I'd like to be brief. Distinguished participants, arable land in Bangladesh, extremely low, if we consider, per capita. Country like China with the highest population, per capita available land is more than, less than 500. More, more, more than 500 acres. In Bangladesh, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm saying that per kilometer population is less than 500. India, our neighboring country, they rank second in terms of population, but the per capita, um, per square kilometer population is less less than 400. Not to talk about Russia, Russia, Australia, Canada, USA, 
they have more less than five six percent per square kilometer per square kilometer and in bangladesh uh, we cultivate highest percentage of arable land cultivable land so there is a serious competition with other crops all the successive governments since uh, long period that they have attached highest importance to address food security that's to grow more uh, rice and any crop has to compete with rice as i said that with the introduction of high yielding varieties and with the dawn of green revolution cotton was pushed to marginal land low productive land we restored the glory of textile unfortunately with imported cotton it is now time for us to seriously think to increase production of cotton and meet a part of requirement of our textile industry you will be amazed to know that in 2019 and 20 bangladesh imported as also you mentioned 7 million bales of cotton fiber with the expense of usa use money while our domestic production was only 178000 bales in last two decades bangladesh made commendable progress in agricultural production we are self sufficient in food grain production in favorable year with climate with climate we are surplus in rice after receiving self sufficiency and many other few other crop grain crops and our government under visionary leadership of sheikh hasina or honorable prime minister giving attention to increase production of cotton in cotton fiber in bangladesh given context we need to evolve hiv cotton and sweet we got to evolve high yielding variety of cotton that suit or fit to our farming system our neighboring countries like india china are growing gmo and hybrid cotton and obtained higher yield productivity i saw from the presentation that is low in india is reasonably good in china but still they can they are larger one of the larger exporter of cotton india our neighboring country because they have adequate fallow land spare land they have land they can spare for growing cottons so i would uh, iterate that we don't have adequate land to grow cotton it cannot compete with other crop we need i remember mr Purid has mentioned two constraints: competitive with other high-value crops, and last he said, in number twelve constraint, with CDP research capacity. That CDP lack research capacity. So we, what do we need? we need dedicated skilled well trained scientists who will expedite introduction of high yielding varieties of cotton and made it profitable and competitive so that our farmers grow it and in incorporating into our cropping pattern or many studies show that it is possible we could not bring gmo or bt cotton from even in india it's a neighboring country 
we could not bring hybrid from China. I do appreciate that CDB is trying to bring high-yielding varieties from our neighboring countries. They have been making trials, field trial, and it shows promise. I'm quite sure that if we make good effort, concerted effort, we can increase cotton production in Bangladesh. And we, we can save a significant amount of our foreign exchange we, that we expend to import cotton. Our government is very firm and very committed that we will increase cotton production. How we spare our land? We consume as quantity of rice per day per capita. It was more than 400 gram, 413 gram. It has now reduced to 370 gram. People are these days eating high value crops like fruits, vegetables, meat, milk, eggs. So gradually, consumption of rice is reducing. We are still sufficient in rice, in grain, and we are addressing food security, not in totality, entirely. We know food security has three components. Availability of the food. We have adequate food, <coughs> at least grain, vegetables. Then <coughs> for our entire population, more than 160 million people, they have also access under several social safety net programs, like free distribution of food, distribution of food at subsidized price, selling of food at subsidized price. We are ensuring access of food of our poor people. But our diet, our food pattern, select nutrients, it's not well balanced and it is not nutritionally rich. We have to consume more protein, more high value crops like fruits and vegetables, eggs, milk, meat. Per capita income is awfully low, it's only $2,000. So our people cannot afford. We have capacity. We do have capacity. If our poultry, commercial poultry farm owners, they use their capacity. They cannot sell their entire product. Same with dairy farm, same with fish farming. We do have technology. We have good entrepreneurs, innovative entrepreneurs, but problem is marketing. Domestic market is not adequate enough to consume the production we can So, but I look forward, country is growing, our per capita is increasing. In last 10, 12 years, we made impressive progress in overall economic growth. In last financial year, we, have, we enjoyed 8.2% GDP growth. Despite all apprehension, because of corona virus, corona pandemic, our growth will go down. It will decline. But still, we had a target of 8.2, 8.24, but somehow we have achieved 5.24 growth. Our economy didn't contract much. We are much better off it came from a study among 66 countries that only six countries, their economy didn't contract because of COVID-19 pandemic. And Bangladesh is one of them. Among, according to the intelligence study of economics magazine, 
among 66 countries, Bangladesh economy is more vibrant despite COVID-19. So we are doing all right and country is uh, growing. Standard of living is increasing. We achieve all the MDG goal. In social index, we are doing very good. Reducing child and mother mortality, mortal, uh, under five children mortality and stunted growth, enrollment to the schools. So we claim, we claim that we are doing very good in reducing human poverty and financial fiscal poverty, poverty. I do hope that as living of standard quality is improving, People will be eating more less rice, and land will be released for producing other crop. I will look crop, cash crop, cash crop like cotton, cash crop like uh, jute. That's also fiber crop. Cash crop like um, sugar, sugar cane. So if it now it depends on our. Scientists, we are providing them infrastructure and logistic support. They have shown that we are constructing a huge building where we'd like to provide, uh, set up a good, well equipped laboratory for doing research on cotton. We want to hire more dedicated researchers, well trained, skilled researchers. And that's the answer. If Cotton Development Board or our scientists can come up with a good variety, high-yielding variety, then it can compete with other crops. And I'm pretty sure we can restore our glory of cotton. It offers a lot of promise because our textile industry is still growing. And we have a very... Uh, good commendable place at the global level, global industry. So we don't have to go for marketing. We have ensured domestic market, at least for cotton. We will not need bimodal market. We will need bimodal market for our ready-made garment. That's end product. I thank again, Cotton Development Board, this exit. Chief Director, I thank International Cotton Advisory Committee. It's our opportunity to come across with you, to share knowledge, to share experiences. I look forward. I look forward to working together and sharing your experiences and expertise. We need a lot of technical support, assistance. These days, ODA, Official Development Assistance, is awfully low. It has come down from 20% to 4 to 5%. That is was mentioned by President Obama in 2007 and 2008 financial crisis. So we do have fund at least to support Cotton development program, research and development. But I, we need your technical support. I sincerely urge you upon all international organizations, particularly International Cotton Advisory Committee. I also thank Egypt, Islamic Development Bank for providing support. I also thank Tur Turkey, Above all, I, will, I look forward to work closely with all of you who attended to this webinar. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This was an excellent opportunity to listen from Kashyap, <coughs> Dr. Kashyap. He made a very eloquent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir, for Thank your you, visionary. Sir. Thank, you, Thank you very much, sir, for your visionary and speech.
and guidelines. Inshallah, with your following your guidelines, we will be our cotton development board will be able to produce 10 bales of cotton per hectare. We will be able to reach our target. Thank you again, sir, for your kind presence. Respectable participants, my gratitude to you for being with us during the whole session. We are at the last part of the concluding remark by our webinar chairperson, Dr. Mahmoud Farduddin. Before he starts his speech, I am leaving you. Have a good time. Thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, encouraging and impressive uh, deliberation. I know, sir, uh, for the whole day, Honorable Mr. Sir is busy from till morning to evening because whole, at the morning it was a big gathering at Hotel Intercontinental and that was also regarding our nutritional issue. And then he joined in a, a very tough level management meeting afternoon after evening. And you consider his age and he has joined for the, we have started eight, now 10, 19, 10, 20. So we are grateful to you, sir. Sir, thank you. Thank you very much for joining with us. Grateful to you, sir. And thank you all the participants, especially ICAC member of ICAC executive director, Dr. Kashyap, Dr. Kai, and representative from the different countries, from the media, and my colleagues. Everybody, thanks. If you have, a, if you have any question, I've seen some question, we'll answer differently directly to you. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity to share with all of you. Thank you, sir, uh, Minister, sir, for joining with us. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Puit Bhai. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I did. So, Assalamu sir. With the concluding, the concluding <laughs> speech, by our Honorable Executive Director, this webinar chairperson, so our session will be formally closed. Again, thank you for your warmest contribution and participation. Thank you, sir. We will work together. Thank you, thank sir. You, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.